Jabba's sail barge was at the center of one of the most iconic action pieces in the entire original trilogy. It had a lot of sequences in it that would seem perfect for adapting into a toy, which is why it seems strange to think that we never actually got a Jabba's sail barge vehicle. They did release a version of the skiff back in the vintage days and then re-released it several times after that. But the closest thing we got to a sail barge was this one-man sail skiff, which is a little bit underwhelming. So people were understandably excited last year when Hasbro announced that they would be making a sail barge vehicle. But Hasbro also raised some eyebrows with their decision to turn to crowdsourcing to fund this new vehicle. Not only were fans being asked to pay $500 for the toy, which was several times as much as any Star Wars vehicle in the past, they were also going to have to wait at least a year to actually receive it. Well, now a year has passed, and backers of the project like me have received their vehicles, but was it worth the wait and the hut-sized price tag? That's what we're going to try and find out today. The box has an awesome vintage-inspired design that I wholeheartedly approve of. It might be tough to gauge its size without something to compare it to, so there you are. It's quite large and unwieldy, to say the least. It's roughly 4 feet long, and about 18 inches tall and deep. In fact, I had to significantly enlarge my photo backdrop here just to accommodate this incredibly large vehicle and box. It was not easy to work with. Just to give you one more thing to compare this to, here is the vintage Jabba the Hutt figure, which is, of course, an internationally recognized standard of length. If we look in the upper right-hand corner of the box, we can see that there's a nice metallic HasLab sticker there. HasLab, of course, being Hasbro's new section for doing this kind of project. And it also includes a kind of vintage-inspired Starburst design, letting you know that you get a special version of the Yak Face figure right in the box. The other thing worth noting about the front of the box is this section right here in the bottom left. It says, includes vehicle, Jabba the Hutt figure, and Yak Face figure, additional figures shown not included and not available for sale. So what they're saying basically is that they've shown a bunch of figures that have been sold in the past, but are not available for sale now and may or may not be available in the future. I thought that was interesting that they did that. On the box, they show a lot of figures that have not been available in stores for quite a long time. So I guess it's just a way of saying, hey, we just wanted this to look its best, but don't expect to be able to go out in stores and buy these figures. So real quickly, I'll just get rid of this guy and we'll take a quick look at the other sides of the box. On the top, we have a great kind of vintage inspired uh, collage of scenes showing the various features that the barge has. I'm not going to look at these too closely because I'm going to be going through each one of these individually in this video. Here's the bottom of the box. Under the photos it reads, Jabba the Hutt valued money and power, and enjoyed showing off just how much he had of both. The Katana, his luxury sail barge, was among the Crime Lord's most extravagant purchases. A massive transport that carried up to 500 passengers, maintained a crew of 26, and was outfitted with space for live music and entertainment. Finally on the back we have this line art version of the photo on the front, which is a common thing on the vintage vehicle boxes, and I find it very charming. But enough looking at the outside of the box, let's open this baby up. And you can see it's got a number of these tabs that you have to open in order to actually get inside the box. And once you do, you'll see that it's not really even a box at all, it's more of a giant piece of cardboard that folds over the contents like this. One of the first things you'll probably notice when you open this is this packet that says stop, read before unpacking. And it basically has some instructions about how to assemble the vehicle itself and some tips about, you know, the best way to go about doing it. I'm going to just go through this really quickly. If you want to read each page, you can just pause the video here and do so at your leisure. It does recommend that you have a barge buddy, which is like someone to help you uh, take out and assemble the barge. I did it all by myself and didn't really have too much trouble with it, but it is pretty large. After you take out the styrofoam and remove the plastic bag that's covering the barge, you're supposed to flip it over on its side and then open up this package of accessories or parts. That includes all the parts of the sails, the clear feet that the barge rests on, and various other accessories. I'm not going to go through how to put all that together because it's pretty self-explanatory once you read the instructions. Once you get it all together though, this is what it looks like. I think it's quite impressive looking and it doesn't even really look like a toy to be honest with you. It looks more or less the same on this side as well, but since most of the features are on the other side, that's the one we're going to be looking at for the most part. 
The color of the plastic is kind of a grayish brown. And then on top of that, they've put a rust colored wash, I guess, to both weather it and make it a little bit more of a, a brown color like we see in the film. Even the bottom of the ship has a considerable amount of detail. And aside from some screw holes, there's not a lot that really makes this look like a toy down here either. Now, there aren't really any full side-on shots of the sail barge in Return of the Jedi, but this is about as close as we can get. And if we compare this to the actual toy, you can see that they are very close indeed. The only thing is, if you look at a shot like this, where you can see a human standing on top of the sail barge, you can see that they're quite small in relation to the overall vehicle. But if we put an action figure on top of the Hasbro vehicle, you can see that it's a lot bigger than it would be if it was truly in scale. But... I don't mean this as a criticism, and I don't really think I would want it to be that much bigger than it already is, especially when you consider that you have to display and transport this thing. Quite a few of these shutters can be opened or closed, but not all of them by any means. And there's also a larger shutter over here to the left, which you can use to recreate the scene where Luke pulls one of Jabba's guards right out of the sail barge and into the mouth of the Sarlacc. The sails are actual cloth over some plastic ribs that look pretty accurate to the actual design from the movie. Uh, the only real issue I see here is that there's no weathering of any kind on these. They look a little bit too new to have been out in the desert of Tatooine for a long time. They are fairly easy to remove as you see here, which is nice because they do block quite a bit of the deck area. So if you want to use any of the features up there, they actually recommend in the manual that you remove the sails. Having done that, I thought we should look at some of the details on the deck itself. There's this cool kind of engine-y looking thing and these two gargoyle heads, which I never realized were there, but I took a clip from Return of the Jedi and enhanced it a little bit, made it a little brighter so you could see the details, and sure enough, there it is. It's pretty cool that we can see a lot of detail that I've never noticed even after seeing Return of the Jedi many times. Speaking of features on the deck, we have this large cannon here, which, by the way, you can't move around very well unless you do remove the sails. Mine also couldn't move up and down until I kind of forced it because it had been locked in place by the paint. This cannon, of course, is best remembered for the scene where Leia turns it around and faces the deck, and then Luke kicks the trigger to set off a chain reaction that eventually destroys the entire sail barge. Now, if you look at the little platform that a figure is supposed to stand on, you can see that it does have some foot pegs there. And unless I'm mistaken, these are the only foot pegs that actually exist on the vehicle. That's another way that Hasbro has kind of kept it from looking too much like a toy, I think. The sail barge comes with a couple of these smaller cannons that are actually detachable. You can take them off and move them around the railings. There are several mounting points where you can attach them like this. Which is kind of a nice touch and seems to go along with what we saw in the film. One other related feature that I thought was really cool are these little indentations on the railing. There are about four of those. Those are actually for using the cannon that came with the Black Series Vism figure a while back. So you can see the cannon here has a little clip on the bottom that you can slide right into those indentations and give you an extra cannon that way. I'm not sure where my Vism figure actually is at the moment, so I will use this uh, Nikto figure right here just to give you an idea what it would look like. You may recall this scene at the end of the sail barge sequence where R2-D2 kind of pushes C-3PO off of the barge through a hole in the railing, and they've actually provided for that as well. There's a little piece here you can slide out of the railing and then position your figures thusly and recreate that little scene which i thought was a nice touch as well next to the main cannon we have this grate that opens up into the main body of the ship you can see there's another gargoyle head there there's actually quite a number of those and of course these doors open up you'll see where this leads into the body of the ship in a little bit when we look at the interior hello I think this is where we first see this part of the ship there where Boba Fett's jumping off. And then we also see it later when Luke comes on, although the doors have been closed to that point. You can sort of see the grating there on top as well, where it would slide. If we move a little bit farther down, we can see these hatches that open up to the inside of the ship as well. As you can see in this scene, a couple of guys coming out to fight Luke. And if we move all the way to the bow of the ship, we can see some of these other cool little details that they've put in. I'm not really sure 
whatever they are, you can see them in a couple of shots. One here with Luke, where they are there in the background. You can see them a little bit more clearly there on the right behind R2-D2. And you can also see some hoses there on the deck, which they have also replicated in the toy. There's one more feature I would like to show you on the deck, but I'm going to have to wait for that until we've opened up the interior of the vehicle. Now, if you look at the side, you can see that there are some minor seams there, and that's where the panels that you can remove come together. Uh, they're actually pretty subtle looking. You can't really tell unless you're looking for them. You're supposed to kind of push up from the bottom like this to open the panels, and it's a little bit tricky, but I'll have to say that they do fit quite nicely, and so I can't really complain about that. I did have some trouble originally getting the panels off because I didn't quite know how they opened up and I didn't want to break anything. Altogether, there are five panels that you can remove to reveal the inside of the ship. So let's look at each part one by one. Here we have the cockpit. Now, of course, the cockpit never actually was shown in the film, so this is something that Hasbro just made up of whole cloth, but I think they did a good job. There's a lot of nice detail here, a lot of paintwork, and some stickers that have been pre-applied, which is always nice. So it's actually one of the more impressive looking places in the ship. You've also got a couple of gargoyle heads there. And of course you can pass directly from the body of the ship into the cockpit as you see there. And of course you can have a couple of figures sit there and drive the ship. I'm not sure if these are the most appropriate ones to choose, but in any case you can put them there and have them be holding the controls. And here you can get a much better look at all of the screens and gauges and things that they put there. It's actually a pretty impressive look. If we look closer at the screen you can see they've got some little labels there in Huttese, and if you compare these labels to some of the Huttese fonts that are available online, they're not exact matches, but you can see enough to kind of decipher them, and so I'll give you what these mean in each case here. I'm not really sure how useful a label pointing to the sails of the ship, for example, and saying sails would be, but, you know, it looks kind of cool. Here we have, uh, Java's Palace, as if they didn't know what that was. Apparently there are no apostrophes in Huttese either. Thanks to uh, Bido on the Rebel Scum forums for doing a preliminary translation of these, by the way. Right next to the cockpit we have a little jail cell where you can keep Java's prisoners. Now this door is actually just for show, it's not uh, an opening door. In fact, this entire uh, wall here slides out of the way. Which, I mean, I guess makes sense, because if it was an opening door, you wouldn't be able to actually get in there and access anything. But mine is kind of sticky for some reason, and it always sticks partway through. If you look closely inside, you can see there's already somebody in the cell. It's actually an Ithorian, or Hammerhead, skeleton. Now, he's uh, basically an action figure, but he's permanently attached to the barge. You can't actually get him out of there. They also included two sets of chains, which you can see here you can attach to your action figures necks or arms or legs and make them be prisoners. They're actual metal chains, which is nice. So now I told you that there's one more feature that I wanted to show you when we got to the interior, and that is to do with the jail cell here. If we look back up at the top of the deck, you can see that there is a small button right here, and if we press that button, one of the gratings there in the back will swing open and deposit whoever is unlucky enough to have been standing there right into the jail cell, which is a pretty cool feature. We'll give it a try right now. Now both the jail cell and this trap door were just things that Hasbro made up as far as I know, but they are very nice little play features and the kind of thing that I would have liked to have played with if I had this as a kid. Directly to the right of the jail cell you have the galley or the kitchen which I think is it's interesting that they chose to make this one of the few rooms that you have inside the sail barge. But of course, Jabba has to eat, and he's got some of his little uh, froggy snacks or what have you hanging there on the wall. The galley is actually part of a larger area here in the center of the ship, where we've got two staircases that go up to the deck, as I showed you before, and also one central staircase here that opens up where that uh, moving grate was. There's a couple of places in the back there where they have molded weapons onto the wall just for decoration, but you can also hang the weapons from, say, the Gamorrean Guard figure on there. You can also store some of your weapons in this little area right here in the center. There's one other feature which you may not immediately notice in the floor here. This is a bit of a smuggling compartment, I guess, or at least a compartment for storing something. You can fit one action figure there, or 
who knows, some, some more weapons or something like that. And it's actually fairly hard to notice if you're not looking for it. Finally, if we look a little bit farther to the right, we can see the throne room area, which is the only part of the interior of the barge that we actually saw in Return of the Jedi. Since this was the only part to actually appear on screen, I'd like to take some time and do some comparisons with what we saw in Return of the Jedi and the actual toy, starting with the throne itself. As you may be aware, Jabba had a throne on the barge that was a bit different from the one that he had in his throne room in the palace. And I think this may actually be the first time that this version of the throne has ever made it into a toy or a statue or anything like that. So just for that reason alone, it's notable. There aren't really any shots in Return of the Jedi where you can see the throne clearly, but we do see a bit of the base of the throne here. It looks almost like it's made of sandbags or pillows or something like that. Very different from the design of the throne that we're used to from the palace. Aside from the different base, the other difference is that instead of the hookah pipe and frog bowl, we have this thing right here. This, of course, was a microphone that uh, C-3PO and Jabba used to talk to the people outside on the skiffs. And also sort of a control panel, apparently, that Leia smashed to close all of the shutters and sort of cause a diversion. When we look at the actual Jabba figure, I'll show him holding the microphone and sitting on the throne and so forth. But first, let's look at this. You can slide the throne back and forth by about an inch, and I'm not really sure what the purpose of this is. I don't think it actually moved in the film at all. The only thing I can think of is that it's just a way to sort of make room for other figures when you're putting them in there for display or something like that. And let me know if you have any ideas as to what this is used for. To the left of the throne, we have what may be my favorite detail on the entire barge. It's a stone tablet showing Jabba, or at least some kind of hut, surrounded by adoring slaves, and I guess most of them are women there. Seems really appropriate for Jabba to have that kind of thing in his throne room, doesn't it? This actually was in the movie, although if you blink you might miss it. You can see C-3PO walking in front of it right here, and that's basically all we see of it through the entire movie, but it was an excellent little detail for Hasbro to pick up here. Something about this carving reminds me of this maquette that Phil Tippett made to show George Lucas and get sort of initial approval for the Jabba character design. It's an interesting comparison. Finally, if we look a little bit more to the right, we can see what I would call sort of the entertainment area where all of the uh, aliens would have been congregated. Right here we have a bronze statue of a Rancor. Reminds me a little bit of a uh, mermaid that you would have on the bow of a ship, which I thought was kind of an interesting touch and something I hadn't noticed from the film. And there's also a set of etched glass dividers here that are transparent. It looked like they have little Rancor arms on them as decorations. These are all details from the film, although I certainly was not aware of them, I think, before I got this toy. You can see here the etched glass behind some of the aliens. And also in this scene, you can see both of them, if you pay close attention. Right here is the Rancor arms, and then in the background, if you look closely, is the Rancor statue, although you can barely tell what it is. There's one other small detail I'd like to show you. In this scene where the two droids are talking, you can see behind C-3PO, there's a trophy head. It's an Ishi Tib head on the wall there. There's one of these heads on either side of the throne room, and they managed to actually put this into the sail barge as well. You can see this is on the inside of the panel that you remove, which I think is very interesting because you can't actually see it, of course, when it's on the sail barge, and when you take it off, it's off. So you could totally argue that they could have gotten away without putting it there at all. But this level of attention to detail is certainly appreciated when we're talking about something so expensive. Speaking of attention to detail, this is the panel that you remove to see the cockpit, and you can see that the inside of it has been completely weathered and painted, even though you can't see it when it's on. Same with this panel right here, which I think is really, really cool. As a Jabba collector, one of the things that I was looking forward to the most with this sail barge was the fact that it was supposed to come with an exclusive Jabba figure. Now, I knew it was going to be a sort of redone version of an already released figure, which I'll get into in just a second, but it was supposed to have upgraded paint and be sort of maybe the ultimate three and three quarter inch Jabba. But if we look closely, we can see that there's a lot of kind of chalkiness to this paint job. The yellow here looks like there's been some weird overspray. It seems kind of sloppy overall. Uh, the eyes, in fact, are the worst part for me because they're very simplistic looking. The original figure was, of course, kind of a shrunk down version of the six inch Black Series figure. 
and this one came with the Rancor pit set that was a Toys R Us exclusive a while back. You can see uh, overall the paint job is brighter and maybe a little bit more appealing to me in some ways, but it does have some weirdness there on the nostrils and the, the drool it just looks very artificial and toy-like, where they did do things like the nostrils and so forth uh, a little bit better in the new version. But honestly, it's almost a toss-up which I like the best, which is kind of a big disappointment for me. Less disappointing is the other pack-in figure. This is, of course, Yak Face, and you can see it comes on a Power of the Force card. It has a coin here in the package. Now, actually, my coin is upside down, and I'm not sure there's any way to jiggle that right side up or not, but anyway. He also comes with a little drinking cup there that you can put on one of the tables in the sail barge. We can take a quick look at the back, too. It's got a nice little blurb about him and and about the Star Wars coin you get with it, just like the original ones did. Now this figure is not unique to the sail barge. You can buy the figure just at retail, but it's gonna come in a different package. It's the standard vintage collection packaging. It's also called Saltima Ray instead of Yak Face. Yak Face being sort of the vintage version. Uh, you can tell also on the back that the packaging is quite different. The, one that comes with the sail barge looks a lot more vintagey to me, whereas the retail one just looks like every other figure you might buy. Since the Yak Face version of this figure is quite rare, I'm not going to be opening that, and I also want to have a version of the Salta Murray figure carded for my collection, but luckily I did have the foresight to pick up another one of the retail version of Salta Murray right here, and this one has kind of a bent card anyway, so I thought I would Go ahead and open this one up so that I would have one out of the package to show you and to put on the barge. Of course, I won't get the little cup that he comes with, which would have been nice to display with the barge, but I think I'll live. Here he is out of the package, and I think it's a really impressive looking figure. He's got nice paintwork there, impressive articulation. He's got some soft goods for the cloak that look pretty good. And uh, even his little weapon there isn't super bendy as it is on some figures, so I really have no complaints. Just for fun, here's all three versions of the Yak Face character. From the left to the right, we have the Vintage, and then the Power of the Force 2, and then finally the Modern version. Speaking of figures, it's about time to look at what the Sail Barge looks like with some figures actually on it. And it is pretty impressive looking, especially the sort of lounge area here, or the throne room area. I could easily spend an entire video talking about which figures go on the skiffs which go on the barge and you know which ones are maybe the best to choose out of all the ones that have been made i haven't tried real hard to be accurate here with the ones that i'm showing in this video i'm just uh choosing some ones that look like they would go well on the barge and, and serve as an example one thing that i wanted to try was to use the vintage figures on the barge and actually they work pretty well the vintage Jabba figure is a little bit big, but he can fit in there on the throne, and I think it actually looks pretty good as a display. So, what's the conclusion about the sail barge? Despite a few complaints and the notable misstep with the new Jabba figure's paint job, I think this is the vehicle that Star Wars fans have been waiting for all these years. It looks amazing on display, and it has a lot of cool action features that actually make it fun to play with as well. My only real reservation about it is the price, and also the limited availability. $500 for something like this, or even more if you manage to miss out and have to get it on the secondary market, is a lot of money, and especially compared to other vehicles that Hasbro has released in the past, it's a huge step up, and unfortunately puts it out of the reach of a lot of collectors, I'm afraid. I feel like $250 or $300 might be a more reasonable price to charge for something like this. But putting matters of price aside, this is probably the best vehicle that Hasbro has ever made for Star Wars. And of course, for a Jabba fan like myself, it is unquestionably a must-own. What are your thoughts about this vehicle? Would you like to pick one up? And if you already have, did it live up to your expectations? Let me know in the comments, and thanks very much for watching.